Hello everyone. This is the last chapter of your syllabus advanced .NET concept and if you are going with the .NET as your career choice then these two concepts are pretty much important and it's going to be asked several times in interview. Okay, so the topic that you can understand is window presentation foundation and window communication foundation that is WPF and WCF. So WPF uh, it is base building application and have a clear separation between your GUI and your business logic. Okay, so just like your window form your WPF uh, you know it is in the same platform it it, it, it it creates the application just like window form application but it gives you the separation clear cut separation between your graphical user interface and your business logic. You understand your graphical user interface in web form it is like .aspx and your business logic your code behind file is in .aspx.cs in the same way here in the WPF the GUI has been written in .xaml that is your extended markup language and your business logic it is written in .xaml.cs okay it, it clearly separate it out here in the WPF and why do we need it uh, the very simplest reason is to create uh, more animations more themes and more rich user interface it comes in .NET Framework 3.0. Uh, before that framework, we only work with window form. And I think you had done that. Uh, I mean, you have several practicals on window form. Uh, you had several chapters on window form. And it is the simplest, you know, window application that you can create with, with those toolbox. Okay. Uh, well, WPF helps user in developing a rich user interface. It gives you 2D graphics, 3D graphics, animations. It gives you rich colors. It gives you themes and styles with minimum code complexity and what do you mean by code complexity I mean minimum code complexity well to understand that just understand that if you are having window form application and so if you are having window form application that you are then precisely are using um, just like 2d graphics right it doesn't have any any animation styles or any colors like that it, it, it is the simplest control you are using but your but uh, but externally if, if you want that your window form possess some 3d graphics like animation styles if you want that then you need to call external apis like directx like window media player or any other dll dll is dynamic link library i hope you know that so your window form specifically needs some some external animation styles or themes then you you need to call external api or dll and so when you are calling these external api it will definitely increases the code or the line of code and makes the code complexity. No one going to understand the code. It's very hard for the third person to read the code and to understand the code. And that is the reason, uh, you know, Microsoft had evolved a newer technology uh, so that we can create a window form or like window application uh, with, with more rich user interface like 2D animation, 3D animations, themes, styles and rich colors. Okay, but with minimum code complexity, you don't need to call those external API. It is already there in the framework. You just have to call the you know namespace, and there you are. Okay, so that's why window. Uh, I mean, the um, I mean the Microsoft had developed this uh, newer technology that is window presentation foundation. Well, this DirectX API is nothing but a collection of API for handling tasks related to multimedia. And by means of multimedia, uh, it is specifically meant for game programming. And you had seen it, right? Whenever you whenever you download or install a game and try to run that game, uh, somehow if it doesn't have any DirectX prebuilt installed on the Windows or on the operating system, then the game is not going to run. You need that DirectX API. It is it is a DLL, okay? Um, not DLL, but however, the, it is an EXE file, compact EXE file. It needs it, right? to run that game that directx is having collection of dll collections of api to handle those game okay that's why i need that directx and you can install that if you don't have the directx on your operating system then you can download that directx from this microsoft uh, website and this is directx and user end time web installer you can download it from here okay so uh, this is specifically for 9 10 11 and uh, the I mean it is specifically meant for 11 till 11 okay so uh, this is it uh, DirectX 
I hope you understand that why why the WPF has been evolved and why do we need it. <clears throat> now, uh, what this WPF looks like? Well, if you see the architecture of WPF, uh, I haven't created it, uh, but let me just uh, draw it here. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm taking this time here. Um, I'll not take much time. So the another box here is meant for WPF managed layer and then the box is specifically for WPF unmanaged layer and then the box is I mean it is just for the user 32 and other DLL so I can write here that um, here it is the window base window presentation framework and window presentation this is the core so let me just write it over here that this is window base and uh, let me just increase the font here so this is going to be 16 so this is window base this is presentation framework then we have presentation core And uh, here we have Milcore, M I L C O R E, and also we have Window Kodak, Window Kodak, and here we have um, it's a small gap here. We have user 32, and then we also have some um, GDI call, graphical device interface. And also we have device driver to run those application or oh, sorry the hardware okay device driver and between this this and this we have something called as CLR uh, let me just put it over here this is common language runtime and also we have direct 3d okay which is nothing but uh, direct text okay so this part is window uh, WPF sorry WPF managed layer and this part is WPF unmanaged layer okay I hope you understand the managed and unmanaged managed is uh, run by CLR and unmanaged which is not run by CLR okay uh, this is this comes in first chapter so let me just let me also draw some uh, lines here um, take some width and the the thing that window base is going to touch here is it directly touches i'm so sorry it just directly touches to the clr then window codec is going to touch here to direct 3d i'm not drawing the a perfect arrow however this is it okay and then clr is going to uh, use this complete user 32 and gdi so this this meets here and a presentation and this WPF managed layer is going to be uh, come back over here in the WPF unmanaged layer okay so this is the uh, complete architecture of um, what you can say uh, the complete architecture of WPF also this is in the same uh, okay same location also this has to be this is CLR and this is direct 3d I hope you are getting it okay so this is WPF architecture you can draw it if you want so we have WPF managed layer WPF unmanaged layer and inside that we have different DLL to work around so you can see uh, to see this architecture complete architecture we can also use the Visual Studio uh, to understand but let me just give you the idea on these three DLL that is there in the WPF managed layer so your presentation framework this presentation framework let me just write it down here the, the about DLL so we are dealing with the first WPF managed layer uh, so please note it down here that this is a WPF managed layer and I am I'm talking about presentation framework so this presentation framework will give you something called as window panels it gives you style control and it also gives you about layout so sorry layout it gives you about content and so on okay 
uh, basically what it gives you and so on basically it gives you shows the end user presentation feature okay it gives you the basic raw architecture or you can see the raw um, um, layout of your of your application and next thing is we have presentation core and presentation core will give you it gives you or it provides you provides feature such as uh, 3d 2d uh, we also it, it also gives you geometry uh, and so on okay and apart from that this core presentation core it also gives you something called as a rendering and rendering is nothing but um, it changes the code uh, so whatever the HTML code you are writing or whatever the ASPX code you are writing in the Visual Studio when it uh, compiled and executed and when you go for view page the complete ASPX is being rendered to um, HTML a different HTML okay so rendering you can understand uh, from your web application tutorial um, and I'm not going to explain you well it just when you go for like view page source the complete html code that is you are seeing here it has been rendered okay it has been rendered from your uh, from your source application code okay so presentation core will give you 2d 3d geometry and it also provides you the feature for rendering okay so whatever the code you are writing for xaml it is going to be converted into some some other uh, source code not in the other language but but it it hides some features and it gives you some other uh, some other control okay then we have something called as window base and window base is it holds the basic elements it holds the basic elements um, that can be reused outside the WPF environment so it holds the basic element that we can use apart from you know WPF if you want to work uh, the same element for window form you can use it that is the window base okay such as uh, you can use something called as a dispatcher a dispatcher object um, let me put it in the double quotes this is dispatcher object and you can you can have an idea on dispatcher by looking in the topic of threading um, so dispatcher will invoke call on another thread please look around the uh, blogs for dispatcher object if you want to if you are interested in the in the topic of dispatcher it is a, a concept of threading and it invokes the calls on another thread that you are creating in the uh, um, uh, in the in the thread application okay so these are the WPF managed layer we have framework we have core and we have window base and all these three DLL is there in the WPF and how can you see that you start your Visual Studio, whatever the version you are having. I'm having Visual Studio 2010, so I'm working on it. Uh, so I'm going to start with new project. Uh, so I'm, I'm also giving an idea how do you, how you can create your first application with WPF. So this is WPF under Visual C Sharp. You select Windows and you select WPF application. Right now I'm not giving any name. I'm just putting it WPF application 2 so hit ok also this this dispatcher object is actually comes under uh, you know that right system uh, oh come on system dot window dot thread okay so this is the namespace for dispatcher object because it is the concept of uh, root concept for threading so you can see this is the main page of WPF uh, and, I, and as I told you that the, it, it gives you a clear separation of your GUI this is your GUI and this is the code behind file so it gives you a clear cut separation I'm just resizing this font so uh, I think you can see this so um, and I think you know that we have window main window.xml and main window.xml how can the two file having the same name I, I mean they're having different extension but with the same name how can you do that well you can do that with the help of partial class you can see 
we are using partial class here which gives you the same name okay for uh, for two functions for that so that is the work for partial class that gives you the same name for two different functionality okay so uh, we are not working on that but we are dealing with WPF and I was saying that I have this uh, WPF managed layer and these three DLL framework core and window base you can find this DLL in the properties uh, not in the properties actually in the references sorry uh, so in the references we have you can see this is presentation core we also have window base and we also have this presentation framework and as I was saying that presentation framework will basically gives you the uh, presentation features so when I click on that and you can find system.window.control here uh, here system.window.control and you can find all those control here can you see we have combo box we have combo box item content control and so many other things so your data grid or grid is also going to become inside the presentation framework so you can see here <coughs> this whole thing is known as grid you can see this this grid this is the grid or you can say this is the layout and layout is this one so this is the complete grid and that grid come and exist in win window uh, present uh, window uh, presentation foundation managed layer inside presentation framework and this is it this is the grid you can see okay so these are the things that you can do <clears throat> other than this we have presentation core and presentation core is saying you can see system.window.media for that <coughs> excuse me system.window.media uh, it gives you the uh, text options or media animations you can see and media animations as i told you that gives you 2d and 3d geometry it, got, it also gives you animations so this is the thing that it gives you uh, you can see here um, uh, stick story board it also gives you a thickness animation thickness animation base and other stuff okay so other than that we have window base and for window base as i told you it it having dispatcher object so you can find that dispatcher object inside a system dot window dot threading <coughs> so you can see here we have dispatcher object inside system dot window dot threading okay so these are the three dll that we had discussed in wpf managed layer other than that we have wpf uh, and managed layer and we have uh, uh, we have another dll so let me just separate it out wpf unmanaged layer <coughs> which deals with milcore so milcore gives you it is a bridge okay just like sql data adapter it is a bridge between wpf managed layer and DirectX okay this is the bridge between WPF managed layer and DirectX and you can see here uh, precisely in the paint we had seen this mill core is acting as a bridge between the WPF managed layer and this direct 3d okay this is the mediator between managed layer and this uh, whole new, uh, whole new DirectX okay this is the component these user 32 GDI device drivers are the component of or component of DirectX and that that's why this mill core is going to be is going to be your you know a bridge uh, <clears throat> or intermediate that communicate between managed layer and this DirectX API okay <clears throat> and next thing is we gonna understand the uh, window Kodak <clears throat> okay so this is window codec and window codec is another low level api it is another low level api for managing support such as it actually works with a video processing and image processing image video uh, processing it also uh, works with image video uh, displaying <coughs> And scaling okay 
scaling means um, if you are having 1080 uh, as your base output but if you want to see the screen in 720 then we need to scale your frames and that's why we have scaling okay and window codec you had seen many a times in your uh, window media player or in the mx player or individual uh, sorry in the vlc player so if you are having a dot mkv file it never runs on window media player it, it it says or it prompts you with an error that i need an external codec to run this dot mkv file okay so then you will install some codec and then that supports dot mkv extension okay uh, we had seen many a times uh, in your real time uh, you know whenever you watch movies or something like that so whenever there is an extension that is not supported by your media player then i need this low level api which is known as window, window codec <clears throat> Okay, please uh, do this experimentation on your window media player. It never works with .mkb file. You need an external codec to run that .mkb file. Okay, I hope you are getting it. Now, the next thing is, uh, this is done, WPF managed layer. We have small entities on DirectX. DirectX, you, had, you already know that. It is a collection of API. I'll give you an idea on user 32. <coughs> so, user 32 <coughs> manages to render the content <coughs> this minute <coughs> actually user 32 it, it is not uh, renders the content actually direct text render the content user 32 manages <coughs> it manages the memory and process process separation <clears throat> in your OS in your operating system chapters or in the operating system subject you had seen the user kernel and uh, I mean user system and the kernel system uh, in the user 32 it is a part of user system okay in your operating system so it handles your memory management and the process separation or the process management okay having several other things uh, such as it also use uh, used to do something called as event handling <coughs> it also gives you an idea on timers it also gives you an interprocess communication so whatever the connection between register to register it gives you the it it, it can be done with the help of user 32 okay other other term that we had seen in the uh, in the in the architecture of wpf that is the graphical device interface uh, this is okay so this is a uh, part of window form and uh, this topic is also being covered up in your window form chapter um, so this is it provides let me just give you a um, short formulation on gdi plus it provides expanded set of graphics and rendering quality okay this is your gdi plus last thing is we have clr that is common language runtime next thing is we have device driver i hope you are getting this uh, device driver is nothing but it is specific to <coughs> operating system specific to operating system and it is used to apply to it is used to apply to access any specific hardware or you can say the peripheral device that you are connecting i don't know i think my spellings are wrong but that is okay so it is a device driver is applied to access any specific um, uh, it is a kind of you know the intermediate that communicate with your operating system and your hardware okay your operating system doesn't know that what kind of hardware you are using so this device driver is going to tell you your operating system that uh, the hardware is what and how it is going to be operated okay it is a program so it, it depends on your operating system it is 32 bit operating system or 64 bit operating system i hope you are getting it now let's get back to our visual studio this is this is this is all the note that you can write it down uh, for the exam point of view okay so we get back to our visual studio and we have wpf over here so what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to drag and drop one button control and this button is going to be uh, is going to be inserted in between the grid layout you can see here so you can see we have in the code part you can see 
we have grid as the root and inside that we have the button control so this this black lining that you are seeing is your grid and inside that we have this button control and you can already see here that this button is completely different from your window form it is having better style better theme and better uh, color complexion okay so i can change uh, different things over here and just like i can change the uh, i mean i can change the color just like brush you go for brush and then you can see here i can change the oh i'm so sorry this is for form I don't need this <laughs> oh it completely changed uh, I need this button and now I can I can change the color of that so you can see this is nice uh, you know theme uh, this is nice uh, I mean color complexion where I can apply this on this button however um, I'm just I'm just writing this code I already have it right actually um, let me just let me just run this I'll simply write here that message box dot show hey there new to WPF okay so this is what I'm writing and when I run this application <coughs> you can see that it gives you a very a nice um, style of button you can see this is completely different from your window form button I, I can show you this uh, I also have this window form when I run this uh, you can compare these two these two uh, you know the output so this is from uh, window form and this is from your WPF the buttons are completely different a very styled button here in the WPF and uh, it is good to see this okay so it is having rich user interface however in the window form it is doesn't have any uh, any kind of comp I mean kind of capability to have those animations and those graphics okay this is the basic comparison so I am just closing this window form and I'm going to give you uh, a basic uh, you know a kind of I'll, I'll, I'll create one simple animation uh, to work around WPF uh, so what I'm gonna do over here is uh, I'll give you the animation for fading in and fading out so I'm going to remove this button you can you can fade in fade out for any control but I'm specifically taking the image control so I'll search for image and I drag and drop here the control and you can see that this image is again comes in the grid uh, in the in the grid section okay <coughs> okay so now I need one image here and image you can get it from I'll I'm going to um paste so you are having this image control over here and to get an image here inside this image control what you can what you can do is right click on this image control and go to the properties or you can also use this shortcut f4 to have the property window uh, so i'll go for this source and i click on this button choose image and you can have this download.png image of visual studio actually you can hit ok you can add it from here also you can copy and paste or paste it over here so that you can uh, you can directly get the image okay there are many ways to do it so this is the image and what I'm gonna do is whenever whenever I hover my uh, mouse inside this window the image is going to be fade in and image is going to be fade out whenever I I uh, make my mouse uh, leave the window okay so to do this i need to event to generate so i'll use something called as mouse leave and mouse enter event so that so that i can have this animation okay so what i'm gonna do i'll go for the event section and i'll search something called as uh no i'll go for i'll click on this image and then i'll go for event and then i will search mouse leave or mouse enter event so i'll go for enter event and i'll double click on that okay <clears throat> I'll just remove this section and uh, and also to do the to have this animation I need a namespace and the namespace is using 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 system dot window dot media dot animation okay so this is the namespace by which you can enable the animation inside any control okay so right now I have mouse enter and I'm and I'm going to do what I'm going to fade in here 
because my mouse is going to be enter inside that window so that uh, that image is going to be fade in so the code for that is i'm having image class i'll i'll use the variable img and then i'll use again image and then it is going to be in the center and then i'll use something called as double animation to have the animation uh, uh, animation class and then i'll use danm as the variable of double animation and then i'll say new double animation and you can see i'm um, um, it is having five overload method double animation having five overload method and i'm going to use this first uh, uh, first overload method which says double to value so the first argument that i'm going to pass is over here is one to fade in okay so to fade in i having one and then i need the duration uh, at what at what second or what minute at what hour i need this animation to be enabled so i'm going to say time spin dot for from second okay so time second so and how many seconds to be enabled for that i'll say two seconds or let's say it is having for three seconds okay so for three second the fade in three second for for three second this fade in thing is going to be happen uh, with this one uh, inside this image okay i hope you are getting it now next thing is i'm use image dot begin animation and begin animation needs dependency property dp so where exactly you want this is i'll say image dot op opacity property okay so this is my dependency uh, property what what kind of animation you want on this image i want opacity property i'm going to make it opaque okay i'm going to fade in fade out for that i need opacity property so and i'm going to pass animation timeline animation so oh, i mean it, it it is asking me the time duration and you already had a variable for that we have danm so i'm just going to pass it okay so this is it and now when you gonna run this uh, basically it will run but i need another event also that is mouse leave event so what i'm gonna do i'll go for xml again I'll, I'll click on this image button and i'll search mouse leave event and what i'm gonna do is i'm going to copy this complete thing and i'm going to paste it over here and just a minute change i will say fade fade out here so for fade out i need this zero okay this is it so when i run this application you will see that the image is going to be fade in and fade out whenever i hover on that window so now you see when i entering my mouse is not working it will work so you can see the image is fading now okay now when i enter into the window again the image is going to be come back after three seconds okay so you can see this is the uh, animation uh, property or you can say the animation application of wpf i hope you are getting it this is the code for it you can have it okay so the next thing that we gonna do inside this wpf tutorial is the data binding okay we already we 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 always do this data binding for every application we had seen in console application we had seen in window form application we had seen in web form application and now we are seeing this data binding in wpf application okay so what i'm gonna do here is i'm going into the xaml part again and i'm going to uh, delete this image I'm completely deleting over here and uh, i'm also removing this background i don't need this having the completely blank blank grid over here i'm going to xml.cs again i'm going to delete this these events i don't need it okay i'm going to remove it and the first this is the fr fresh page now okay i'm not taking any new project here uh, this is okay to me what I, the first step is you create one database.mdf file and it is easy to to get one right click on that add new item and inside data you are having this service based database that is nothing but database 1.mdf you are creating one database here okay so i have this database 1.mdf i'm going to open my server explorer uh, which can be uh, enable in view you can see we have server explorer the shortcut is control alter s and you can have this server explorer you expand this database 1.mdf and here we have tables uh, there is no table right now 
currently we don't have any so i'm going to create new table and i hope you know these steps because you already had done console web and window so i'm going to also sorry i had clicked compare table <laughs> so um I'm, I'm, i just have to close this close it and table add new table i'm to i'm going to do it quickly so the first column is going to be id and i say integer the first the second thing is i need f name for first name i'll say i'll say fair care then l name for again where care and i'll say city again where care okay so this is the thing that we had done i'll set uh, id as primary key and then in the id i need this uh, identity specification to get an auto increment in my id so is identity is going to be yes and i'm going to save this table as tbl underscore data and the next thing is i'll insert some dummy data inside my table you can have this table here and the column of these table and what i'm going to do is i'll insert some dummy data here show table data and the first name is going to be let's say this is test and the last name is going to be test one and let me just have some good names smith and uh, it's going to be what smith smith and he's from um i don't know marika we have rahul we have a surname as kumar and he's from mumbai now uh, we also have nitesh and uh, sharma uh, he is from uh, maybe from lucknow okay so this is the dummy data that i had inserted and now i want that this data is being displayed inside the data grid view okay this is my intention now so now what you can do you need data grid view right so you go for toolbox search for data grid this is the data grid inside all WPF control and you drag and drop over here. Okay, so this is your data grid. It is completely blank. Now you know that uh, in web form and window form there is a button and from that button you, uh, add, you do something called as add new column. However, inside WPF we don't have anything, right? You also can right click and we have, you know, this data grid but it has been completely disabled for us. So, how to create those, you know, column? Well, you can create those column manually by writing the code inside this grid layout. So, I'm writing the code. You can write with me also. So, the first thing uh, you need to write over here is I need columns, right? So, what I'm going to do, I'll write data grid dot columns. Okay, because I need columns. So, I need data grid dot columns. Next thing is I need column headers, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll say data grid text. I think I had done something wrong here. And what it says, um, I think it has been yeah okay so this is it and I need this everything data grid data text column to be inside that data grid okay so please remember that if you are if you are using this end tag it is not going to work over here so you need this complete data grid a uh, complete tag so what I'm gonna do I will use again data grid dot column and you can have now Okay, inside this data grid column, I need data grid text column. So I'm using text column here. I also need something called as header, and header is going to be, I'm so sorry, what is this? Yeah, header is going to be ID, and I'll say I need also the width. Width is going to be 40, let's say, and then I need something called as binding property now. This is important. You haven't done it, right? This is hardcore binding. In earlier, in earlier, uh, you know, uh, applications like web and window, you, you never do this hard code binding. You already have an option in, inside the, you know, property window, uh, the binding option, right? 
However, here in the WPF, you are doing hardcore binding. So binding needs uh, curly braces and you will say binding ID. And this ID is going to be the same as the table column name. Okay, this is binding ID. And you're going to be uh, close it. So this is your first column, data text grid, uh, sorry, data grid text column. And you can see here, we, we already had enabled our ID column. Okay, the same way you will do the same thing for, um, for F name, uh, same thing for L name and same thing for column. So uh, again, what I'm going to do, I'll change the ID to uh, uh, first name and this ID to be last name and the last ID is for city. Okay, and I'll change the width property too. So this is going to be like 100. Uh, this also needs to be 100 and let me have the last column to be as 100. Again, I also need to change the binding here. So this is now binding as F name, uh, binding as L name and binding as city. Hope you are getting it. Okay. So I think this is done and you can easily see over here inside the okay you can see here in the in the data grid view you have id first name last name and city it is it can be visualized over here right just like in the web form and window form you are having the data grid view um, you can see the columns id first name last name and city just like in the in the table id f name l name and city and you had binded these column with this uh, data table column name okay so now i need back end code so i go to window main uh, main window dot xml dot cs and what i'm gonna do over here is i'll create one method here and the method name is refresh data and i'm going to enable it by pressing alt alter enter and it will generate one method for me i'm going to remove this throw new implement exception and i'll write the code for adio.net to bind that data grid view with my data table. So the first thing in ADO.NET you had seen is the SQL connection, right? So to use this SQL connection, I need namespace. So I'll use the namespace as using system.data.sql client and also use using system.data, okay? I mean, it is not necessary, but I'm just writing it in case. So SQL connection con equals to new SQL connection and I already know, I, I hope that you know how to uh, get this connection string by going to your server explorer database one dot MDF in the property in the property window you are having oh I'm so sorry property window. So the next step is going to be I'm opening my connection con dot open and then I'll use SQL command to give the command query. Uh, the SQL query SQL command CMD equals to new SQL command and I'll simply say select star from my table that is TBL underscore data and I'm going to pass my connection object okay and then I'll use SQL data adapter SDA equals to new SQL data adapter I'm going to pass CMD here and I'll use data base Actually, you need to use something called as data set here. That is DS equals to new data set. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use SDA.fill and TS. And then I'll use if condition and my data set tables row is equals to zero dot. I'm so sorry rows dot count if the count is greater than zero then what i want i need to bind my data grid so data grid one dot item source and your item source will come or the you know data source is going to be come from ds dot tables from zero dot default view 
this is it and then in the last i'm going to close this connection and i run this application uh, i hope this will run so you can see that my data grid is completely been you know uh, it has been it has been filled from the data table that we had in the uh, in the database you can see show table data and whatever the data we having in the table it has been loaded inside the data grid view and this data grid view as you can see this is i mean this is more uh, rich user interface is having then that of a data grid view or the grid view in the web component or in the uh, window component you see it it gives you the uh, the sorting or the filtering according to the ascending and the descending order of id uh, just like first name last name just like last name we have city is also according to the ascending and the descending alphabets and id is also going to be ascending and the descending order of your this numeric character right and we also have the scroll bar here uh, this is not scroll bar actually <laughs> but uh, we also have this with, with this scroll uh, and we can if we have larger number of columns then we can scroll it so it is uh, having larger component than that of you know the grid view and the data grid view so this is your data binding with um, with data grid in wpf c sharp i hope you are getting it we had seen two applications uh, for wpf and uh, i think it has been um, is going to be easy to uh, i mean i mean formulate that in the visual studio uh, just watch the video and do the step by step uh, practical okay i had also given the the notes here you can get this note and write uh, uh, write about wpf when it, when or if, if if it is being asked in the exam okay thank you so much for listening to me if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section and uh, i will try my best to resolve it okay thank you so much